Thanks for having me. All right, so let's uh, let's start with uh, with where you guys are right now. Four and two on the season. Uh, you beat a Samford team that was in the NCAA tournament last year. You beat an Iona team that was in the NCAA tournament last year. Kind of uh, bring us up to date on these first six games and and, and what you've liked about your team and, and maybe some things you need to work on. Yeah, I mean we're uh, like everyone this time of year. I think we're you know a work in progress. You know, we've like you mentioned, we've had some really good moments. Um, which is exciting and encouraging and for any team. And, you know, especially I think ones with a new head coach and, and guys in new roles, you're just, just trying to figure out who you are. Um, I'm fortunate that we're, we, we return a lot of, a lot of players who had success last year. And so, you know, our staff knew we could lean on certain guys and that's been great. And we've, um, we're fortunate to have a few, players who are used to winning which is always helpful for coaches and then the the rest of the guys you know many of whom played a bit last year but are in new bigger roles and that's sort of where we are like trying to figure out you know who's going to be able to do what and um what our team needs to do to win and what we need to avoid to lose to not lose and all that stuff so I'm encouraged for sure by the first six games and you sort of expect to be a little inconsistent this time of year, but definitely uh, going in the right direction. You know, you just brought up guys in new roles, even though that, you know, they're guys who have played in your program or guys with experience. And we're seeing this all around the country, coach, where, you know, whether it's, you know, uh, high major programs or, you know, mid majors, everybody, it's, it's a process, right? No matter how much you practice in the preseason, there is that process of trying to figure things out in games, correct? I mean, can you speak to that a little bit about, you know, when you expect, um, you know, the team to start hitting its stride? Because it, it, it does take a few weeks, maybe even a couple months in some cases. Is, right yeah no doubt I mean there's, there's nothing that can um, replace or simulate a real game right and so we <laughs> in the Ivy League we we don't get a summer like everyone else does um, and you get a couple months of workouts and practices and you get two scrimmages and then you're just thrown in the fire and so um, yeah I mean you don't know how guys will react to being in you know real uh, competition with some some, uh, you know, there's no other word for it, like stress, like, you know, hard situations and how they play together. And um, we're fortunate in our league, you know, it, we're, I don't think we're as affected by the transfer portal as, as many other conferences. And so you, there is some continuity um, and guys are used to playing together in a system and all that. So we have that working for us, but still there's, um, you can't expect it to be a finished product in, in November. And so, you know, as a coaching staff, we just talk about, like you said, the process and um, having a vision for it and making sure everyone is, is aligned and working towards something. What's this uh, this experience been like for you? Uh, you know, obviously played at Cornell and then you were on the staff there for many years and you take over now as head coach, uh, you know, being uh, in charge at your alma mater. You know, what what is what does this mean to you? What's this been like for you? It's It's been a lot of fun. Uh, you know, I, the since April when I got hired and the whole uh, spring and summer, that, that was, that was cool. You know, it was like a honeymoon period and everyone's excited and <laughs> like, it was great. And um, now, you know, I'm not thinking about that as much as just trying to like prepare for games and get these guys better and put them in the right positions to succeed. But still, when I had do have a few moments here and there, it is cool to reflect and, um, you know, it, it's it's an incredible feeling for sure, and to be and to do it with a group of guys like this, it makes it more special. You know, they're really it's a similar group in terms of their chemistry and closeness to when I played. You know, that's what made us really good. We were very close, and um, that obviously has a lot to do with success on the court. So, yeah, I'm just grateful and enjoying um, every moment, and uh, also trying to do my best to like stay present and uh, prepare for these games that keep you know one for the other there's no real rest in, in the non-conference especially because you know played i own a monday and <laughs> like shotgun preparation for syracuse and that's what it's about it's a lot of fun you know, and for people who haven't seen you play yet, it's a fun brand of basketball. It's up and down. Uh, you score a lot of points. You, you shoot a lot of threes. I mean, you made 13 threes the other night against Iona. Uh, can you speak to, I guess, your style of play and, and, and where, where that comes from, uh, you know, for you and your philosophy, I guess, as a head coach? Sure. I mean, I, I 
you know, honestly can't take too much credit at all for the style of play. So I'm sure you, you guys know. So Brian Earl was our head coach the last eight, sure. eight years. And, you know, during COVID, um, when we weren't having a season, you know, he sort of went in the lab uh, <laughs> and uh, hunkered down and, you know, came up with a system, a system that fit our personnel and, you know, could be good for us here at Cornell. And so obviously from there, you know, as a staff, we kind of tinkered with it for a few years and we've had success. And so, you know, this year uh, we haven't changed too much, honestly. I mean, our personnel is a little different who we're featuring and we lost some guys from last year's team that were very good in the system. So like I mentioned before, we're still trying to figure it out. But um, regardless of the personnel, I think for me, it's going to be about, you know, effort and unselfishness. And that goes hand in hand with how we play. You know, you have to play very, very hard to do this, you know, play the, the fastest tempo in the country and uh, press the whole game. So if you're not playing hard with like ultimate effort and exertion, then you're going to stick out for us. And so that's kind of a non-negotiable. And then the unselfishness that goes with how we play and sharing it and getting good shots. And so, you know, I don't know if we'll be playing at the first, the fastest pace in the country forever, um, like after this year, but this year it fits for us. And no matter what, um, I just want our guys to go hard, leave no doubt, you know, that we want it pretty badly and just play for each other, be very unselfish people on the court. You mentioned a moment ago that uh, you played Iona on Monday, and now uh, it's been a, a quick turnaround, obviously, to get ready for Syracuse. In your preparation for this game, Coach, what stands out to you about the Orange? What, what concerns you about this team? Yeah, I mean, they're talented, yeah, clearly. Uh, have a lot of really talented players who can make shots and hurt you in different ways. I think... You know, obviously Starling is off to a great start this year, um, and he's he's a problem. You know, the way he's shooting the ball and how aggressive and um, confident he is. And then if you have Lampkin inside, with he's just obviously a <laughs> a presence, and he makes you game plan for him. Um, and he's a very good passer for how big he is, right? So it's those two, that inside out combination, and they have some really talented young guys around them, clearly. So uh, it's, it's you know, we're going to have our work cut out for us, and um, we'll put our best foot forward tonight for sure. You know, in looking at SU's start to the season, I'm, I'm sure you well know they had those three close games against non-conference opponents, against LeMoyne and Colgate and Youngstown State. Is there anything you can, you can take from those games, uh, from how the opponent approached it, and, and apply to your style of play? And I guess if you could kind of lay out, you know, the expectation for you guys tonight and, and how this is a, you know, a, a, a one or two possession game with five minutes to go and, and give yourselves a, a chance to win. Yeah, I mean, I mean, we're... That's that's the hope, you know. If we're if we're going to be in the game, it's because we're playing, you know, our brand of basketball and, and taking really good shots um, and making sure Syracuse is shooting the shots that that we want them to shoot, which is easier said than done. You know, I, I think in just my experience playing Syracuse and over the years as a player and you know, as a coach now, uh, no matter what the team is, it's it's a game where. You want to avoid those like those runs where you, you commit a live ball turnover and they get a couple dunks in transition or a couple made threes and then it you know it was a, a one or two possession game kind of stretches out quickly. So for us, it's just being smart on both ends and so hopefully you can minimize those those stretches where it's kind of a momentum shift and um, the game changes. So for me, that's important. Just uh, if we can avoid those stretches, uh, hopefully we'll be. Uh, I'm good shape.